my response to DJ Maporisa, Prince KB, McG. Number one, I first like to congratulate the gentlemen for having done really well in their lives. I admire all three of you guys for giving other younger artists an opportunity to grow, for putting them on. If you wouldn't have had, if you wouldn't have had a collaboration with them, they probably would not have had a successful career. Their lives would probably would not have changed. Um, their families would probably have not been um, looked after the way they are being looked after now. But all because of you guys decided to either put them on, collaborate with the younger artists, work with them, etc. in some form of way or however, you have then played your role in changing other people's lives. And for that, I commend you guys. I'm so proud of all of you. I've seen all of you come into the game and I've met all of you and I, I really love your work. I admire your work. You all inspire me in different ways. But now let's get into, um, first up with what Maporisa said on a tweet or on an X platform that um, I'm paraphrasing here. Because the music was recorded in my studio, in my house, in my computer. I, buy, I pay the rent in this house. I keep the lights on. I pay for the food, etc. and all of that. I organize the recordings. Obviously, it's his house. He's the one that invites the guys to come which means he's the one that chooses who comes there. So he plays a really big role in being the producer. I think there is a term or a narrative in 2024 or lately that makes the audience think that a producer is a beat maker. There is a difference between... A beat maker can also be a producer, by the way, and composer as well. A producer also can be somebody who organizes the recording. A producer can also be somebody who pays for their recording. They can also be a composer. But that is decided upon all of the artists or the parties that are involved. Copyright is automatic for those who don't know. Copyright is by default. There's a beautiful article. I'm going to put the link of this article in the description and I'm going to read it for you before I come back with my commentary. Copyright is automatic and collaborators always need to agree on ownership. This is really, brill this is really a brilliant thing about copyright. As soon as you write an original song, you create a song copyright. As soon as you record a track, you create a recording copyright. There are no forms to fill out, money to pay, permission to be granted. The copyright exists and you have control over it. All you have to do is make sure that the work is fixed. So that means it is written down or recorded. Who owns the copyright, you ask? If you don't register a new copyright as it is created, how do we know who owns each copyright? The law provides us with default ownership. What is the default ownership rules? Let's start with the most important ones. We know who the first owner of any copyright is, right? With songs, the default first owner is whoever writes the song. Number two, with recordings, it is whoever organizes and or pays for a recording to take place. If more than one person is involved in writing a song or organizing a recording session, they co-own the resulting copyright. Whenever music makers collaborate on writing a song or recording a track, they need to reach an agreement, an agreement on agreement about copyright ownership. You have to talk about it. You have to agree on it. Who will own or co-own each copyright? What share does each co-owner get? That's when we come into what we call split sheets in the music industry language, where with each recording or every song that you make, you all agree that you'll take this percentage because maybe you made the beat because of your composition role that you played, or maybe you wrote the lyrics even though you're not singing it. This is what we are agreeing or we are proposing that you will take as a percentage to the song. Why not because it's your vocals, but you didn't sing everything that you wrote, some of the things we co-wrote with. You know what I mean? Like you agree on who's going to own what percentage. That's what we call split sheets. 
and those should be done as soon as the recordings are done. Because sometimes we get excited, we go into the studio in the early hours of the morning after a gig, or maybe we're in town, we haven't seen each other in a while, we bump into each other at a show, there's energy, there's vibing, maybe there's drinks involved, and everybody's excited straight to the studio, a song gets made, and before you know it, excitement is always catching up on us as creatives. We might just be too excited and end up posting it on social media. We might just too, get too excited and even mix the song that night. If maybe you're even working with producers, you can even master, even master the song that night, that tomorrow morning or tomorrow midday, the song is already done, mixed and mastered. It can even go out. They might even want to just release it the following day. Ends up being a hit. You didn't agree on a split sheet. You didn't agree on who gets what. And once a song hits radio, it gets the buzz. It becomes, the songs are become an instant hit. What do you do then? So you don't want to find yourself negotiating all of that after the song has been released. You want to do it before. Yes, I know it's impractical sometimes to always talk about split sheets even when you're still recording. No, but make sure at least as soon as recording is done, as you're about to leave, just quickly have that five minutes discussion, guys. Try to do that all the time. Or just quickly try and get your manager on the phone and or just propose a split sheet agreement on whoever you co-composed the song with, you co-collaborated on the song with in producing and writing and composing, engineering, etc., and all these things, so that there's a split sheet that writes down your agreement for later cases in case you guys go to court or you get to want to know how do we co-own this song at what percentages each. Now, this is for collaborators to decide on what percentages you guys agree on, right? It's common for either the label or the main artist to wholly own the recording copyright. With songs, the copyright would usually be split between each writer on the agreed fee or percentage, as I've said. You guys have to document your agreement. Please, it has to be on black and white. Whatever you agree, write it down. And one page is what I was just saying, split sheet, split sheet. that's fine. More established artists might just get a lawyer to write a short contract. Worst case scenario on an exchange of emails would suffice. At least there's paper trail for future purposes in case anything happens. Or there are apps that can help you with the process. Log it. Guys, log it, please. Ideally, you should let the music industry know what has been agreed by logging it with the main industry databases. And obviously the regulatory bodies. Um, you're publishing, they should know all of that information. If you are, for instance, a Samro member, you now already have a dashboard that you can link into on your side, on your computer, on your phone, so that you log, you log it at least. You'd let um, Samro know, we've just made a song last night, this is my share of it that we've agreed upon. I co-own this song with such and such and such and such, as per grid split sheet, these are our percentages. You log it right. Yes, some people who are stoked in the past they will then, because they are the label or because they are the, the beat maker and it's their studio and they're in charge and they're the producer maybe of that song or of that studio or whatever comes out of that studio, they end up logging with a comp organization like Summer in a wrong manner where they end up giving themselves 100%. And maybe the new artist that they've just worked with knows nothing about split sheets and agreements and logging off all of that type of stuff. And this person at a later stage ends up owning the entire song. We've heard of such stories of record companies or producers or big artists who end up taking e-publishing, taking an entire ownership of the song when it's not rightfully so. Why? Because a young person was just excited that they were in the studio with a famous artist and they're just excited that they've just recorded with them and they didn't know about what I've just said about split sheets, about negotiating a green and logging it. And maybe even being a member of these organizations like Abu Kapas or Abu Samru, they probably don't even know nothing about having or owning or registering their own publishing company so they can own their own publishing. So they own the rights or the publishing rights to a, 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 their contribution to that song. Remember, every song, it's not all artists who can produce, write, sing, rap, and do everything all by themselves. We all collaborate. That's why I love uh, Prince KB's point there about collaborating and sharing. Now I'm one of those people that believe in equal shares, equal sharing. 
of a song. My split sheets, sometimes I even favor the vocalists that work on my song. Sometimes we co-collaborate equally on however or whatever we own the song with. And also, people that I work with, I make sure would, they've got their own publishing details. And when we log it with these organizations or these DSPs or these apps, I make sure that everybody is credited accordingly. That's extremely important to do that. And I know that sometimes I get a lot of flack out there by people not understanding the internal agreements that artists make or how the music industry operates. That's why I'd like to encourage new artists out there, guys, go register your own publishing companies. Go get yourself a lawyer. Go own your entire musical works or contributions, even if whatever song you are featured in, all of that must be owned by your publishing. That means you own your music in perpetuity. Even if you can die, your publishing company owns publishing to your music so that your family will forever benefit. All the artists who've ever worked with the TS Records will always encourage people to own their own publishing. That's extremely important. Let's do that in the entertainment industry. Encourage new young artists to register their own publishing, get good representation, and guys, always negotiate about the co-ownership of a song in the studio before you even leave. I think I'll leave it there for now, but you can go to this um, article. I'm gonna put the link of it in the description. But yes, everybody is correct. Maporisa is correct that he organized this recording. He paid for the electricity, it's his studio. And obviously somehow he co-collaborated, he co-composed these songs. So yes, as you, can, as you have read here by default, that which is the composer or that which pays and organizes for the recording uh, is liable for the ownership of the song. But I just want to say all you new artists, even if you're not recording in your studio, you're recording at their studio, please have that conversation after the excitement has dumped down, maybe just after the recording of the song to say, hey, how do we work the split sheets? Hey, can I please link you up with my manager in the morning so that at least we can work out the split sheets, the agreements, and um, my publishing details and all of that stuff. Make sure that's handled while the excitement is still there. That is my message to all of you guys. Yes, fans have got all their opinions. Buzz of Tuga, they'll go Lena, Lena, they'll drag us and they'll say all sorts of different things, but they do not know the internal agreements that were signed by musicians, composers, artists, producers, singers, vocalists or whoever contributed, or session musicians, guitarists, uh, piano players, whoever it was, in, who are in, whoever is involved in creating the musical work or the recording in the studio, yeah. people don't know, they're not, pre they're not privy to those agreements. So they are more bound to always favor a person they are a fan of and support them. And, you know, they'll drag all of us. They'll uh, say all sorts of opinions, but sadly, most of those opinions are not informed by understanding how the music industry operates. Mm -hmm. But this message or this video was done for new younger artists out there. And I just saw it as a really interesting um, teachable opportunity or teachable moment to have this conversation. Let's speak to professionals from all these companies, Abu Kapaso, Abu Samro, and all these people that understand the recording music industry. The CEOs or the big shots in these recording agencies, recording companies, I'd love for us to have more of these types of conversation. I think um, Pori, McG, Prince KB have given us a great opportunity, teachable opportunity for us ha to have these conversations about music ownership, default ownership, publishing, mechanical royalties, royalties, and all these different things that our new and young artists have to understand. I'm currently writing a new book that's gonna come out later this year, and I'll also be able to lay down some of our agreements and our story and our side of the story about some of the works that we've done in the past that the public is not privy to and they don't understand how we operated and when we say we are innocent and we did great work and we made history together, you find that people are mad at us and they're always dragging us because of their own understanding of the situation, but not actually understanding how the music industry operates and what the law says and what the agreements that were signed between the co-collaborating artists and their record companies, producers, session musicians, everybody else. They don't. So then they obviously have their own opinions, which they are rightfully um are uh, um but in um they are, they are rightfully um but in you have a right to your opinion yes they are rightfully giving their opinions in 
because that's the law. Like everybody is, is, is a right to have a, an opinion and there's freedom of speech where you can say whatever. So I never take uh, being dragged uh, personally because I understand majority of our fans don't understand the music industry and they're not privy to the contracts that were signed behind the scenes. We can go say whatever we can say in all these different podcasts, but ultimately it boils down to the black and white and what was signed and what was, was agreed to by the actual creatives. All the best to the creatives out there. Get a good lawyer for yourselves, guys. Get an accountant for yourself. They don't have to be expensive, even though you are a new artist in the game. That is extremely important. So you don't find yourself at a later stage having a hit record that generates huge sums of money, but only to find that you didn't know um, what you know and you ended up making the wrong decisions and you didn't lodge or log things in and have agreements even before the music came out. Please let us all do better because we are not all immune to all these things. We're all human beings, we all get excited, we all do work, sometimes we forget things, and sometimes we might end up getting into hot water on things that could have been prevented. But just because of excitement, we just want the song out, because we're being rallied by the fans, and there's hype, there's a buzz, we end up um, in these arguments, and in these fights, and in these beefs. But anyway, to close up the video, I just wanted to thank the three gentlemen, for giving us a great opportunity of a teachable moment on the music industry. Let's have the conversation. What are your thoughts? Comment section. Let's go. I love you guys. Danko.